This is a scene that most can only ever hope to replicate. How did we get here? One going to oh. he just about hit it in the eight. Oh, he took another swipe at it. I was watching you, and then this guy come racing in. Just about to hit him in the eight. Hey guys, welcome back to the cave and today we're talking about double headers and why fish seem to gravitate to certain spots on shield lakes and especially around moon majors and time of day and in this case it's always kind of later in the day or around a moon event and in that opening clip, yeah we didn't get that fish or those fish I guess, pardon me, but it was a really cool sequence, and you're going to see as we kind of go on here, Richie and I got a fish in that spot. We no sooner got that fish back, and then we basically got that double coming in, and it, it got me to thinking what constitutes a really cool spot that's going to hold multiple fish, and double headers are not totally uncommon. We've had a couple. Here's one from last year. There you guys go. <laughs> How's that feel, guys? Not bad. That's pretty good. They're almost the exact yep, same size. One's a tiger, one's a purebred. So in that first clip, that's Kyle and Dave getting a double header on suckers, which is probably more common only because there's going to be more fish kind of together when there's that amount of bait in the fall. But just recently, a few weeks earlier than this video was shot, I was out with my buddies from the Sad Boy Muskie Club, and we were up on Cedar, and we had a really tough day. We actually caught one, a small one. We didn't even save the video because it was like our second last spot. It was like 32 inches, nothing that we needed. But our very next spot, which was going to be our last spot of the night, we pull up, and then this happens. Got one We're too. Double. We're double. Okay, bring her this way. I got no, I got it. Now. Ah! <laughs> double flying, Dude. Oh. Nice. Today, how's that feel, guys? That was, was pretty cool. It was cool. The second one jumped into the net. Yeah, so that's going to yeah. be some cool footage as well. So, again, a couple small fish, but it's really cool that you pull up on a spot and you cast up. One guy's got one on, or one guy's got one moving, and then. 20 feet away there's another fish that's doing the same thing and that just tells it that those fish are active and there's something that they're relating to whether it's in the in the lake in their environment whether it's the moon time of day and this one that we had with the sad boy muskie club it was later in the day so you're coming to that kind of it's starting to get dark out fish are getting more active and it re like I say, it really got me thinking to look at a few of these spots here. And I want to show you guys the fish that Richie and I got just prior to moving those two fish. And we'll kind of set up the breakdown in the whole segment based on catching that fish. Let's go check out that fish right now.
Nice. <laughs> All right, it's not a super long fish, but like look at the back. Like it's a pretty nice solid fish. Yeah, I know you're pretty grumpy. I'd be grumpy too if I got a dadson in the face. <laughs> He just wants to go. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you look like me trying to grow. <laughs> oh, he's, he's pretty green. <clears throat> okay, I think we got him. Yeah, it's 42 nice. or something. Yeah. Pretty decent little fish. He's full of piss and vinegar. I can feel him he's like right on the verge of wanting to go all right we'll throw him out this side rich what did it shut off on you i think no it's still on oh all right as you can see got a nice low 40s fish in the back of a bay pretty typical kind of stuff that people are looking for on shield lakes but i'm going to break it down a couple different ways because i want to talk about why fish gravitate to certain spots especially in the evening and we're on eagle lake so there's no night fishing so you got to keep that in mind that while the fish might be out on on midday rocks or reefs or around the basin some fish do sit in weeds all day but in this case richie and i have found a couple bays on eagle that typically we don't see fish in a spot like this during the day but that last hour of sunlight before it starts to get dark, we see fish move into these spots and a lot of times we can contact two, three, four fish in a spot like this, as was the case tonight. And what's cool about a spot like this is it has a sandy back and then there's a really distinct transition on the shoreline. There's some rocks on both sides and I use that as a guide to basically kind of control my boat. I come up and I want to roll around like that, staying in that nine to ten foot area so i'm casting into the weeds i don't like to cast way in the back if there is a fish there typically it's going to be a smaller fish so in this case we pull up and i always start kind of where these rocks are and about halfway across richie and i were here i cast up into kind of isolated patches of weeds and that's where that first fish picked me up and we got that one back and in the background of the video you're actually looking at the back of this bay and then we didn't actually save the clips but it's only about three minutes later as the boat sitting right here and at that transition line where there's rocks on shore there's two super thick patches of weeds and i cast basically right in that gap and richie cast the top water just on the top edge of the furthermost outer deepest uh, weed patch and both those fish pulled off there and yeah we didn't get them but it was really cool to see that we had caught one and we moved two more active fish all in the same spot within about 15 minutes and if we break that spot down even wider it'll give you guys a sense of perspective on what's going on so this isn't exactly how the lake's laid out but you can use this as a guide for most shield lakes. So if you have the main basin anywhere from like 30, 40 to 50, 60 feet deep, and there could be rock humps, all kinds of stuff out there that fish will gravitate towards during the day. And in this case, <clears throat> we have fairly deep basin. And I showed you two separate bays that are not like each other. And there's rocks on these points coming out of these bays. And during the day, we'll find fish off of these rocks. And in this case, we also have lake effect current. Although this year, because of the low water, essentially no current. But we, what we have is current running this way. So we do see fish set up during the day on these type of rock points. What we don't see in the evening is fish move back into a bay that's really deep and only has a really small patch of weeds and is not a confined bay. So think of any of the big shield lakes that you guys might fish. Look for a bay that has a really distinct opening to it and then it opens up in behind. Not one that's just a long, gradual, you know, 
could be a big wide bay. You want something with a very defined opening. And what that seems to do is it draws fish in both sides of it. And we see the fish set up across this weed line at the front of it. And they seem to sit there all night. And Richie and I have been out a couple times in the morning. There's going to be a video coming in the next few weeks where we get a really big one on Eagle. And we get out first thing in the morning because in the evening we find the fish in a bit, so, spot very similar to this. But we come back in the morning and surprisingly to us that fish had already started to move out of that back bay out to where he's going to sit for basically the daytime. So when you guys are up on Shield Lakes and you're trying to break down water and you're seeing fish off of main lake points, you know, main lake reefs, look for a bay that might hold some weeds and might be a little bit more sheltered where these fish might move back in and spend the evening. But don't get caught up in there because those fish in the morning a lot of times will roll right back out and then sit back in that main basin. And hopefully this will help you guys land some more fish. And for us, we started to fish this way a couple of years ago, especially on Eagle Lake. And we were able to find where fish had moved out during the day. And then again in the evening, we could go back and we can try and target some of these fish a little bit later in the day. And pretty predictable, these fish move back and forth. So for another video where we use this type of tactic, check out the link right here. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.